much. Now, come here, bro. You're making a statement, right? So you're saying who? Blacks and Hispanics never were slaves. Well, what can you read that at? In the book. In what book? You don't have it in your hand. No, I'm asking you what book. Watch this. Let me show you something, bro. Let me show you something. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things. You remember what God said? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Which is what? The Bible. You, heard, you read the scripture I just read? Hold on, bro. It say prove all things. So when you get to throwing stuff out there, you got to have resources to prove what you said. Mainly it got to come out of the Bible because this is the one true book on earth. The reason why we're in the conditions that we are in today is because we broke God's laws. And we got to come back to this Bible as the Israelites. Right. Hey, brother across the street, how you doing? Come here, I want to show you something that we got on these signs right quick. You got a minute? All right, read. Give me, give me the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. You brothers and sisters out here, you so-called black men, you so-called black women, you are the Jews of the Bible. You are God's chosen people. And you got to repent and come back and keep God's commandments. Watch what Christ said. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Read it again. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So who is this speaking? Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right. What is the truth according to the Bible? What is the truth according to the Bible? Because a lot of people say, I got the truth. I keep it a hundred. What the truth is according to the Bible? Is God going to lead us astray? Is he going to tell us the, that we should know the truth and the truth shall make you free? And he don't give us no understanding of what the truth is? Watch this. We're going to read. Read. The book of Psalms. Chapter 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy truth and thy law is. Hold on, brother. Hey, brother, right here in the red. Check it out real quick. I want to show you something. Hey, bro, how you doing? What's your name? Lazar, I'm the What's your name, bro? Michael. My name is Zephaniah. Right? Now watch this. I'm gonna read the scripture again. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So the righteousness according to the Bible, God says, is what? Righteousness. Is what? How long Everla is it? Everlasting. It's everlasting. The righteousness of God is going to be forever on the earth. That's what it's saying, right? Hold this and give me righteousness right quick. I want to show you something real quick. Because we, 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 we as a, hey, bro, what's your nationality? Ukraine. You from Ukraine? Okay, what's your nationality, bro? Puerto Rican. You Puerto Rican. Okay, so according to the Bible, you will be an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim. You will not be a Puerto Rican. You ever heard of us teach before? I already know. That. I know that already. You know that already? Yes. So what you know? You know you're an Israelite already? I'm an Israelite, but I haven't studied that. I know that much. You haven't studied anything? Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be all righteousness. It shall be all righteousness, or we shall be righteous if we observe. It says if we observe to do all these commandments. So what? It, how? What's going to make us righteous by doing what? Uh, ten commandments. The ten. The what? How many commandments? The ten commandments. No, it's more than ten. Yeah, but they only gave us ten. Who gave us ten? Jews. The who? The Jews. The Jewish. Yeah. They, they ain't the real Jews. I know that. I know okay, that. okay. So they, they didn't give us anything. They taught us lies in slavery. Right. So it's more than Ten Commandments according to the we Bible. Never, you know that, right? We were never, we were never slaves. Say it again? We were never slaves. We was never slaves? We were never slaves. Why you say that? That for a fact, I know that. Egypt didn't have no slaves. They didn't build the pyramid. Those pyramids was there when they got there before the deluge. The deluge being flood, before the flood came. So here come the Anaki and say, we will build, we'll build this, this temple out of mud. Give me first Thessalonians real quick. I want you, now come here, bro. You're making a statement, right? Yeah. So you're saying who? Blacks and Hispanics never were slaves. Well, what can you read that at? 
It's in the book. In what book? You don't have it in your hand. No, I'm asking you what book. It's, it's Watch this. Let me show you something, bro. Let me show you something. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things. You heard what God said? Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Which is what? The Bible. The Bible is what's good. Now, you say the Israelites, when they was in Egypt, they wasn't slaves. Give me uh, uh, Exodus chapter 1. Let's start at verse 7. I'm going to prove to you that when the Israelites was in Egypt, they was, they was in bondage. They was in slavery. Watch this. I'm going to show it to you. Who is that? The book of Exodus. You, heard, you read the scripture I just read? Hold on, bro. It say prove all things. So when you get to throwing stuff out there, you got to have resources to prove what you said. Mainly, it got to come out of the Bible because this is the one true book on earth. Hold on, bro. Give me a second. Let me, let me show you something real quick. Because first, you said the Israelites did, was never enslaved. Now, watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king of Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel. Say the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Watch this. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Come on. Lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war. It says let us deal wisely with them. Meaning they came up with a plot on how to destroy us. Now watch this, read. When there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters. The Bible says the Egyptians set over the children of Israel taskmasters to do what? To afflict them with burdens. To afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. That's the treasure cities that you said they didn't build. That was, those were the pyramids that you're talking about. Bring it out. Our people, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Read. What verse is that? Verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they afflicted our people because what? They had us in slavery. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Read. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. To serve with rigor, meaning hard bondage, bro. Hard slavery, read. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. With what? With hard bondage. What's another word for bondage, bro? Slavery. Slavery. So the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt and they built the pyramids. You understand what I'm saying? But wait a minute. Because we you, you, you said something. And you got to be able to prove what you said. I just proved that the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. Now, give me Exodus. I mean, give me uh, Deuteronomy 28. Now, the same, matter of fact, before you go to that, give me Exodus 6 and 5. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to show you something real quick. Because what you just said wasn't true. According to the Bible, the children of Israel built those cities, right? Okay. I got you. Now, watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 5. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel was crying. That's what it means to groan. Whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. In what? In bondage. In what? In bondage. Whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. The Egyptians was the, who you just said? Who you just said? They were dark-skinned people. The land of Ham. They was in Egypt. Egypt is part of the land of Ham, bro. Okay, so now you understand that we were slaves under the, under the Egyptians, right? Now, what about us going into slavery today? Did we go into slavery today? We're in slavery right now. But you understand that the, the Puerto Ricans was colonized, right? Their land was taken and was put on ships and shipped to Spain and all these different parts of the earth. What y'all got over there? Let me get this book right quick. Now watch this. We're going to read this book. What you say your name was again? Michael. Michael, watch this. What, what page we got? 
The Black Indians. The Black Indians. Who is by? William Lauren Katz. All right, now watch this. Let's go ahead. Page 27. For the people of the Americas, the arrival of Columbus was hardly a blessing. On his first day, October 12th, because you know when they say uh, uh, Christopher Columbus discovered this, uh, uh, this land, they say. We're not saying he did. He didn't. Because we understand that the so-called Hispanics was on this land already and the Native American Indians. Now, it says it was hardly a blessing. Meaning what? He came over here to slaughter and murder. Ponce de Leon is the one that conquered Puerto Rico. He was sent on that voyage to destroy the Puerto Ricans. Watch this. On his first day, October 12th, 1492, the explorer wrote in his diary, I took some of the natives by fort. What? I took some of the natives by fort. So when he came, when Christopher Columbus came on this side of the earth, North, Central, and South America, it was natives that lived there already. People that was occupying that land. In Puerto Rico, your people was there already. Here in part of, of, of America, the, uh, the Mexicans was over here. The Native American Indians was over here. Hey, bro, what's your nationality? Palestinian. Palestinian? Okay. All right, cool. You understand? But you understand, right? You was conquered. How much more we got on this? He later found the original inhabitants to be tractable, peaceable, and concluded there is not in the world a better nation. His response as a European was to say that Indians must be made to work. Indians must be made to be work. What type of work? Slavery. Watch this, read. And adopt. Hey, bro, where you going on the bike with the blue? You got a couple minutes? Bring it out knowledge, bro. Watch this, come on. And adopt all ways. And adopt all the ways of the white man. And what? White man Jesus, Christianity, Catholicism, you understand that? All those ways was not our ways. Those was the ways of the white man. Read. The Christopher Columbus, whose unique semi see. That's what I'm, I'm trying to bring out to you. Come on. Hey, bro, you got a couple minutes to uh, see what we teaching? I appreciate it, You don't love God? Don't you, don't you believe in the Bible? Don't do that. I'm asking you a question. I mean, but you I, said, right I said, do you love God, bro? I listen to you, but I Come got here. things to do right now. But ain't, ain't, this, ain't, ain't to hear the Bible more important than anything? Come on now, brother. Read. The Christopher Columbus, whose unique seamanship and courage had opened the Americas. I want to get through this. Had opened the Americas to European penetration, also began the trans-Atlantic slave trade. He started by shipping 10 chain Iroquois men and women to Seville, Spain. In 1498, he wrote enthusiastically to King Fernandez. So the transatlantic slave trade did not just start with black people. It started with the so-called Native Americans that was on this side. Hey, sis, you got a couple minutes to listen to what we're teaching. It's very, very important. So, Because a lot of people think the transatlantic slave trade only started with so-called African Americans. It started with you so-called Hispanics and Native Indians first. Right. Read. And Queen Isabella about the business possibilities. From here, in the name of the blessed trinity, we can send all the slaves that can be sold. You so-called Native American Indians, you so-called Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, Cubans, you were slaves first on this side of the land. Read. When he loaded 1,100 Taino men and women, Taino, Taino, Tainian Indians, you so-called Puerto Ricans, was put on ships and shipped across the world in slavery. Come on. Aboard four Spanish ships. Above what? Above four Spanish ships. The crowding in the stormy Atlantic crossing took a tearful toll. So give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Here you go, Ops. Jose. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Because a lot of people don't know that the transatlantic slave trade started with you so-called Hispanics, you so-called Native American Indians. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt is synonymous for slavery. 
Egypt means slavery in the Bible. The Bible says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or slavery again the second time with ship. But you're going to go into slavery on ships. Who did this happen to? You blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. The curse that came upon us for breaking God's commandments. God said that the blacks and the Hispanics will go into slavery on ships. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we're not going to see our homeland as a people. Okay, we're from the land of Israel. We're from Jerusalem. That's our homeland. God said because we broke the commandments as a nation, we're not going to go back into that land. Read. And there, and there, once you get off the slave ship, ye shall be sold unto your enemy, you so-called Tainos, you so-called Mexicans. You were sold unto your enemies as slaves. When Christopher Columbus came over here in 1492, and he sent out different generals to conquer you brothers in North, Central, and South America. And then they came and got us from the West Coast of Africa to bring us here to be slaves with you because that's a prophecy in the Bible. Give me that in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 33. So God said, because of our disobedience, because of us breaking the commandments, we were going to slavery on ships. So how do we fix these problems in our community? How do we stop our women from jumping on the back of a car and twerking? How do we stop our young men from shooting up the block? How do we stop these brothers and sisters from selling crack cocaine, heroin, weed, ecstasy to their own people in our communities? Right. Well, and how are we going to do it? The only way we're going to do it is with this Bible. That's the only way. And we must come back to the Bible as the Israelites and keep God's commandments. Right. Read the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, and the children of Judah, I'm talking about you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, were oppressed together. That's what God says. He said that the blacks and the Hispanics will be oppressed together. Why? Hey, brother, right there with the hat. Hey, brother, right here that's eating your food. God said that we will be oppressed together because we broke God's commandments. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.